Did you did you know the genders of them? Like, no. how does that work? You didn't want to know? No, I didn't want to know. I'm surprised because because otherwise the day's boring when a human being comes out of your wife's <laughs> vagina. <laughs> it's quite. It's, oh, I wish there'd be some surprise. Like jeopardy. <laughs> um, so no, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll talk you through because I, I was just saying beforehand. I don't think we've actually ever told you about Kitty, my daughter's birth at all. No. no. Right, so this is good. Bev woke me up at like two in the morning and said my water's broken. God, inconsiderate. Yeah, I know. So we phoned up, we thought, oh, this is exciting. It's mm. all good. Um, so we phoned up the hospital and they said, um, yeah, it sounds like your water's are broken. Um, and then the woman on the phone went, oh my God, I've got to go and hung up. <laughs> and we we're like, oh, right. Um, I don't know what, what the hell is happening. I don't think we can phone back immediately because something's going on. Yeah. Um, and we thought they didn't seem that bothered about it, so we'll just go back to bed because there was no contractions or anything like this. Um, so we just went back to bed, got up in the morning, thought we'll just go into the hospital. Yeah. So we got on the bus. Is this um, Kitty? But you're Kitty. It's so Kitty, Kitty, yeah, yeah, yeah. first child. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, she's now eight. Um, so we got on the bus to, we're living in London, we got a bus to the hospital. Um, and uh, there's things that, you, there was, there's sort of no contracts or anything. We went in there, they sort of, they didn't even inspect Bev or anything or have a look. They just said, yeah, no, it sounds like um, you've, yeah, it sounds like water's broken. Basically, go away, come back in 24 hours if nothing's happened because mm-hmm. there's a risk of infection to the baby after that sort of length of time. So hopefully contractions will start in that time. If not, we'll bring you into hospital. Mm-hmm. So um, we figured baby was done, was ready, so we'll just go to the pub. So we went to the pub, met some friends for lunch at 12. I uh, had lunch with them. Bev had a pint of shandy because, again, it's done now, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> can't muck it up too much at that point. Um, is, so that, no, is the baby not feeding off the mum still then at that point? Yeah. <laughs> I think Shandy's all right. Yeah, Shandy's fine, yeah. She's not like that back Zambucas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do, going through the going through the optics. Um so no, so um we um so that was that was about midday. We left there about two. We went home, got about uh, about twenty past two, and um the uh, and Bev was gonna go and have a nap. She took a couple of hours and was gonna have a nap mm-hmm. um so that she'd be rested if things started. And then but then um contractions sort of started. We went, okay, well, this is kicking off, but so they can start and stop apparently, and all things right. like this. What is a contract? Uh, a contraction? I don't really know. It's a sort of, <laughs> I think it's your. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to make something going on down inside a woman. I love that it's just two two blokes talking about <laughs> yeah. pregnancy. What is a contraction? I will tell you, Jack. I don't know. I've had three kids. I've got no idea. Uh, they have it. But what happens is they they go on for a certain amount of time and you don't immediately go to the hospital because they can start and stop or and it can go on for hours and all this. Right. And um, so you're supposed to go, if I recall correctly, when they are three minutes apart, lasting a minute. Right. So they first of all, they might be like 20 minutes apart. Yeah. And then they'll get closer and closer like that. Shit, it's so, like thunder. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot like that. So it went very quickly. It's just like half two they started. It went very quickly from them being... 15 minutes apart to being like three minutes apart, mm. to two minutes apart. Something like that. So we phoned up, we're, look, it's only been going for like an hour, but there seems to be, it seems to be going really quickly. And Bev was like in agony, like was, yeah. couldn't, couldn't walk and all this or that. And you see other people going, yeah, in the early stages of labour, um, I went for a walk in the woods to take my mind off. I, mean, I don't think my wife's that much of a pussy. <laughs> Everyone else is strolling across the hills and yeah. she's paralysed on the bathroom floor. We just had new carpets, so we put her in the bathroom to do <laughs> Do a dirty business. Um, so she is. So um, so we've we've we um. She was in there and um, and we went. We phoned up the hospital. And they were really dismissive. They were sort of like, "Oh yeah, first time mum is it? Yeah, come in if you want. But we'll probably send you home." They were quite sort of. Wow. They were kind of like, well, "Okay, so we'll, we'll go in." Yeah. So oh, they, oh, I'll go, I'll go get the car seats. So and we've been given two car seats by friends, and they're mm. both in the shed. So I went into the shed. Um. And I was in there, in there for a couple of minutes looking like, oh, which one? Because one was looked a bit smarter, but it was it was less worn. Uh, like the, the one that looked more safe, but the other, it was a bit more worn. The other one, I was going, oh, which one should I go? I'll probably go for the one that looks safer sort of thing. We'll go for that one. Yeah, there. Went back in. Um, and as soon as I got back in the house, I was going, Robbie, Robbie, come upstairs. I came upstairs, ran in the bathroom. She goes, the baby's here. And there's a head sticking out that was not there before wow. from between her legs. on all fours. There's head sticking out. Like, ah, like that. So I picked up my phone. I got down my hands and knees. Dialed 999. Sorry, for a second, I thought you were going to say, I picked up my phone. So <laughs> yeah, no, no. Instagram stories. Um, yeah. No, so, so I got down my hands and knees. Like 30 seconds ago, I'm in the shed. Yeah. Like, hands and knees. Before the guy answered 999, this baby just popped out into my arms. 
I've been in the shed like 30 seconds ago. So there's babies, there's, there's, there's babies in my arms. I'm like, still attached by an umbilical cord, obviously, like that. And I, I, the guy's friend goes, what's going on? I went, I just delivered a baby. And I was just thinking like, just don't kill this baby for like four minutes and everything's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the guy goes, right, um, he's going, um, he goes, okay, um, uh, is the baby breathing? Going, yep, yeah, yeah, is it, is she, is it crying? I was going, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's making make noises crying and all this sort of stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah, that's good. He goes, uh, uh, what colour is it? I think he meant as in, is it blue, not? Yeah. yeah actually, actually, it's black. <laughs> I'm having a few words after this. Yeah. Um, but no, so he said, well, what colour is it? He said, right, go and, go and get a towel, wrap the baby up, keep it warm, um, go get another towel, um, to, to wipe its airways and all this sort of stuff. Got through a lot of towels. There's a credit to Ferry Non Bio as well, by the way. <laughs> how many towels were salvaged from this event? So, so you're got, you've got to get the towels. So, getting towels from the cupboard, yeah. So, you're already, um, then they're in, they're, within they're range. close, they're close, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. So, um, <sighs> so, so I've got, I've got a towel. Oh, I think we we're in the bathroom, so there were towels around, I think, uh, to start with. So, mm. doing all this sort of stuff. So, I'm holding the baby and all this. Mm. And Bev's still like, <laughs> on all fours because it's, it's still attached to her. Yeah. And the guy said on the phone three times, he said, do not cut the umbilical cord. So I don't know what bloke in the past has got his Stanley <laughs> knife out. Going, I know what you're going to say next, mate, and I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so be, they were very clear not to just randomly cut an umbilical cord. Yeah. Um, so he's going through doing all these things, like saying, check this, check this, um, uh, and all these th- things. So they're really, really good. So right, the, the, the ambulance is on the way um, and all this stuff. Um, all right. And then, and then, after they said, right, is everything okay? I went, yeah, everything's fine. Right, right, right. The ambulance is 30 seconds away. Go downstairs, open the front door, then come back up to be with mum and baby. So, so right. the door's open when they get there, they can just come straight in and go upstairs. Yeah. Uh, um, how, what are you, what, oh, this is mental. Yeah. This is a madder story. Yeah, I it's, need it's to pick. mental, yeah. What are you doing with the baby when you're going to open the door? Yeah, so, so the baby, I can't just give it to Bev because it's, the cord's still coming out between her. So I have to like pass the baby through her legs so it doesn't get tangled up because it's still on this... <laughs> Cord, what? give her back the baby and said, so, so, oh, this, like that. So I went down, opened the door, came back up. Uh, we sat there with the baby. The guy goes, um, and so this has been a, a born for like three or four minutes by this point. And I said, okay, the, the paramedics are nearly there. Um, everything all right? I went, yeah, yeah, it's fine. He said, I said, okay, good, good. Just, just, just wait there. No, he said, he said, um, what have you had, by the way, a boy or a girl? I went, oh, I don't know, mate. Yeah. And, and check. And I said, Bev's a boy girl. She goes, I don't know. She said, look, went, oh, girl. Yeah. yeah. But we had like, she'd been, must have been a few babies that's alive for like four minutes before you bothered to check what, <laughs> what they've had. So it wasn't like, we're just literally thinking like, keep this baby alive. Yeah. And then the paramedics turned up and then, and it was all, people were saying, oh, that must have been really scary. But it was like sort of proper adrenaline, like, was like it? sort of like that. Yeah. But then afterwards, once, once they were there and everything was fine, I put, gave they were looking after the baby and looking after Bev and all this sort of stuff. I did just go into like a room at the side and just burst out crying. Sort of like, like, did you? Like, oh, like shaking, sort of like that could have been yeah. horrific. Well, do, but, yeah. do, do you think, were the tears more like um, the emotion of having a, a daughter? It was everything, I think. It was like the whole like, that could have gone, Yeah, that could have been really bad or, or, or that just the whole everything happened. What, yeah, a, I think. what a story though. It was absolutely mental. And it's good now. Now we've got photos of like, uh, the paramedics in the, with the baby and all that sort of yeah. stuff and all these things and we had like, like there was an ambulance and two emergency response cars outside and stuff like that and it was, it was it was really good yeah is it is it quite rare obviously that story is very rare but is it quite rare that like some women will just have the kids at home well, like my friend Dirty Kate um, <laughs> oh god she's uh, <laughs> she's um, Dork's Noser right uh, um, Kate, Kate Burnett um, she's really, she, um, she's a music plugger she used to do like The Enemy and Hard Fire and all, all things like that yeah um, she um, she had her baby outside um, well she went she went to the hospital they mm. sent her away right um, with the partner she was driving off um, Chelsea Westminster Hospital driving off she's going the baby's coming the baby's coming like that said, um, said okay we'll turn around go back and go no no stop stop the car stop the car she parked outside Stamford Bridge had the baby in the front seat of the car but it's like 11 o'clock at night so drunk people are coming past going <laughs> horrific what and she said, she said if you ever want to get the best service at, um, at a hospital drive walk back in holding a baby half an hour after you've been told to go away wow she just walked up to the nurse that sent her away and went told you I was having a fucking baby <laughs> fucking so, hell so yeah I, mean, I think it is rare but I knew that story before we had ours like that so yeah so yeah, so, well, what were the the other two were fairly normal, were they? Yeah. So after we had Bev went in, Bev and Kitty went into hospital for a couple of days after, just because I think they they sort of shat themselves that they told us that everything was pretty all right. And yeah. Go. So we went in there probably unnecessary. But after that, we thought, well, we've had one home birth, we might as well do more. Right. So we had home births. Home, but the thing is, when you're having a home birth, they're quite. So I looked at the statistics, and there's a slightly higher risk of complications for the first child, but after the first child, there's no more risk. Than hospital 
Oh, but, right. And it's not much of a, of a different sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, for the first one. So, um, Did you feel pretty cool after that first one? Like when the, when the dust yeah. had settled, did you feel Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. a great story. Life's all about stories, isn't it? Yeah. 